6.30, Sunday morning. I'm on transplant. Let's go. So this is actually pretty cool. I want to share it with you guys. I use the sleep cycle alarm clock these days to wake up. This one right here. And the cool thing is that it actually interacts with my Philips Hue light bulbs. Now I have Philips Hue lights all across my apartment. Here in the bedroom I have one, two, three lamps. And using my phone, I can easily change the color of the lights. But the really cool thing about using it with my alarm clock app, it will very gradually turn the lights on brighter and brighter over a course of, you know, 10, 20 minutes before I wake up to help me wake up in a more gentle way. So really cool. I'll place a link in the description below to the exact ones that I use. I normally ride my bike, but to be honest, had a late night Saturday night, so we drove today. Always gotta take the stairs whenever you can. So this is the transplant workroom. Every morning we create a list of all the patients on our service and we get numbers, check up what happened last night, things like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. After rounding, it's time to type some notes. A procurement in a few hours there are two interns right now me being one of them and the other intern is taking this procurement I'll explain to you guys exactly what transplant surgery is all about so now it's about lunchtime luckily there was an opportunity for me to to get out and grab some lunch real quick before I head back into the hospital so in the morning we rounded on the patients and that means going in early getting the numbers on all the patients and then going around to each patient with the attending checking up on them, formulating a plan for the day, and then after that you write notes. Now for the rest of the day, we have floor work to do. The other intern is in the hospital right now. He's about to go on a procurement. What that means is when a patient passes away and if they're a organ donor, then the surgical team goes out and harvests their organs, brings it back to the hospital, and then transplants that organ into the recipient patient. So the other intern is handling that procurement today. It's gonna be for a liver, so they're gonna go harvest the organ from an outside facility, get the liver, keep it cold, bring it back to the hospital, transplant the new liver to the new patient, and that's what transplant surgery is all about. So I'll keep you guys updated. I'm gonna grab some food though. So it's now around 5.30 and I'm back home. It's actually pretty standard for transplant surgery. I usually go in around 6.30 and come home every day around 6 or 7 p.m. So a little bit earlier than normal today. So I'll be honest with you guys, this is not my favorite service. Transplant is really cool. So usually we do livers and kidneys on the service and it's really cool surgery and it's very life-changing and powerful stuff. But the way transplant surgery works, for me at least at my stage in training, is I'm essentially just on the floor. So I go in every morning and as you guys saw earlier today, you round on the patients, you're doing a lot of floor work, meaning you're taking care of patients who are in the hospital beds, inpatient, and as for operating, that doesn't really happen that frequently. It's usually when you know a, a donor dies in the middle of the night, and when they're deceased, you go in and harvest the organs, and then you have a new patient come in, the recipient, and you transplant that organ. So that's not really scheduled, right? It's, it's, it just happens when it happens. So a lot of the time, it's the senior, meaning my, you know, the fourth year resident, I'm the first year resident, so the fourth year resident usually finds that to be more enjoyable, and then the floor work is usually for the intern. And that's just kind of how it works, not a big deal. So again, today, it was just a lot of floor work, and luckily I was able to leave early at 5.30. Every night at 6.30 p.m., we do what's called sign-out. So there's a night team, people who take care of patients at night, 
and when you're not there, they need to know what's going on. So you go there and you tell them what happened to each patient, things to look out for, stuff like that. So in the middle of the night, if something happens, they already have a little bit of background for that patient and know what's going on. So my colleague did the procurement earlier today for the liver. Now my senior is actually transplanting that liver in the OR uh, very soon. If there are any new donors or recipients that need surgery tonight, I'll be on call. But first, I'm gonna change out of these scrubs. That's more like it. You know what they say, eat when you can, sleep when you can, and don't mess with the pancreas. So, time to eat. So normally in residency you work about six days a week, you usually get one day off. So Sunday, this weekend day, I am in fact working. So it's more of like a normal weekday for me, more or less. Normally what I do when I come home after a shift, I'll eat dinner, I'll do some errands, unwind a little bit, respond to emails, things like that. And then I usually get a gym workout in afterwards. So I'm gonna eat dinner and I will check back with you in a few minutes. 30 flights, 6 p.m. Not too bad. You will grow to fear your pager as a resident. My pager just went off while I was finishing up my workout and it looks like we have a kidney transplant and I am needed. So I'm gonna run home, quickly change, and head out to the hospital. So by the time I got to the hospital, it was about 9.15, 9.30. Got into the OR and we started the case around 10, 10.30. Here I am on the right side holding a bovi. This instrument is used for electrocautery, so we're cutting through the superficial layers of the abdomen, getting ready to insert the kidney. Now with kidney transplants, you don't necessarily take out the old kidneys unless they're causing some serious issues. So this is the donor kidney. It was kept on ice to keep it cool. This improves outcomes in the long term. They're now talking about using various medications that decrease the risk of rejection of the transplanted kidney. And now the attending is prepping the different vessels, so the artery, the vein, and then also the ureters. And the ureters are what take urine from the kidney and to the bladder. Now we're prepping it and orienting it so that when we insert it, it has the right orientation. Here it tells me which side the ureter is. Now he's grabbing the vein and we are we're taking some of the tissue off the end of the vein because it's not in good condition. We want to maximize the chance of having a good anastomosis. Now I have some warm irrigation, some warm saline in my right hand and we're trying to bring the kidney back up to temperature as we're getting it ready to function. So you don't want a cold kidney in the body trying to work. That's not gonna lead to good outcomes. You need to warm it back up to body temperature. So that's why the attending was using suction, taking out all the warm saline that I was putting in. Now he has the bovi in his hand and he is achieving hemostasis. That means stopping all the bleeding because the last thing you want when you close up is for there to be a big hematoma, a big collection of blood. Want extra time, huh? so what, you <laughs> now he's asking me about fellowship, to which I said no. Uh, this is after we had already reanastomosed the different vessels. So this is towards the end. We're just essentially getting everything nice and tidy before closing the different layers. So we finished the case around 1.30 or 2 a.m. I went back home, got some sleep, and then came back in the next morning. That's what a typical day in transplant surgery can look like. Not every day is necessarily that long. Some days are shorter, some days are longer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure you press that like button. Hit subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you guys in the next one.